What do you what are your thoughts on on the idea that some people say Bitcoin mining wastes energy? Wastes energy. Um, that's an interesting. It's an interesting term. Period. Right. Um, what what I think is, is this. The less painful it is to waste energy, just as you know, as a whole, um, the more indicative it is of a of a very robust and abundant energy market in the world. Right. In other words, if if we just had say say for example, all of a sudden tomorrow we had you know ten times the energy production capacity that we do today, like what would the world look like? What would the world look like if I could, if I could consume, if you will, consume or or convert um, a megawatt of, of power before I have a cup of coffee in the morning, right? Like, and economically do it. Well, that would mean that I have like, like one. I'm living in a world where we have insane abundancy of of energy and power. Um, that's that's what Bitcoin leads us toward and it doesn't lead us there by incentivizing the waste of energy it leads us there by penalizing waste wasted energy right before bitcoin for, for example in the oil field you flaring gas was such commonplace i mean it's still pretty much commonplace today that happens you know so frequently but it was such commonplace and and mentally right microeconomic behavior didn't associate any pain to flaring or wasting that gas. Producers looked at it as, hey, we want to produce this crude oil. Almost 99% you know, of the time that you produce crude oil, you get some associated natural gas. We burn that natural gas off because you know it's, it's a cost of doing business, it's a cost of producing the oil. They, they never, there was not a direct penalty there. Now with Bitcoin mining, any oil and gas producer out there who's just flaring energy dense you know, CH4 or methane, well, they could be earning, you know, with new gen ASICs, eight to 11, eight to $12 in MCF today, you know, eight to $12 per thousand cubic feet. So there's literally a stark dollar, you know, amount, a nominal amount uh, of pain associated with that activity. Bitcoin penalizes energy waste. Um, and through doing so, it will lower the time preference of energy producers which will cause them to be more stewardly of the environment, um, cause them to be more efficient, better prepared, um, and, and to ultimately be more economically efficient, right? They're, they will be, be able to better allocate their resources, which will bleed downstream to everybody, right? Again, it'll bleed down to every consumer. So Bitcoin doesn't waste energy. I mean, energy is never really wasted. It's never really consumed, right? It's only converted. Um, Bitcoin is going to be, or is the thing that is going to, to, really revolutionize how we approach energy production um, because if you're wasting energy now you're a dinosaur right you're an idiot you're an, I mean from a from an investment point of view you're you're toast right you're never going to be able to compete and so the bar has been raised right it, it increased the standard of energy production and power generation the, there's no waste that Bitcoin caused <laughs> Bitcoin Bitcoin didn't cause any of this waste yeah, and I fully agree. I think energy is how, you know, civilization scales. That's how we have the great products and services and technologies that we do today. And if we're going to build a world where we have better technology and better goods, better services, we need more energy. So energy is not a bad thing. And, and, and Bitcoin mining is somewhat like incentivizing the reduction of energy waste. But in a way, it's also incentivizing the production of, of more energy to help you know everybody. Right. I mean... This is a harsh world, right? Like anybody who's tried to live in the environments, you know, anybody who's been a, who's who's experienced prolonged exposure, right, to to the elements. Um, I, I personally, right, I've I've done some expeditions in South America through Patagonia. You know, I've traveled the glacier and things. And I mean, this this environment. I mean, people kind of have this this notion. There's kind of this idea that like. The earth without humanity on it, like if you just like removed all the people and the earth just sitting there and, and if we didn't impact it at all, like that it's like this utopian, you know, Garden of Eden kind of place. And it's just not, right? Like 
we have to bear this this you know planet that we live on we have to bear the context of it and electricity specifically but energy and electricity energy and power are really what allow us to even live you know to be 70 years old right um to even have things like like hospitals um in abundance right where there's hundreds of hospitals per state in in north america right um this is this is the fundamental uh i guess the fundamental fuel to comfortable living and to quality of life is is energy and electricity and so it's easy when you're living in an abundance you know in the united states states specifically we i mean we are well off right we are well endowed with with natural resources and we have an, you know incredible infrastructure here for the majority of the world reliable power reliable energy is a matter of life and death right here in the in the united states you know we can we can talk about we can use intermittent and unreliable sources of energy and get away with it right because we can we can back up our wind and our solar with abundant natural gas and things but in other places reliable power of reliable energy might seriously be you know the difference between life and death and so this is a matter of of bringing humanity into the first world is bringing humanity into a, a into a context into a a living situation where electricity and energy is abundant enough that it's economic for everyone to use at will right and and that's that's the world you know i i want right that's the future i want um, the world i want for for my kids one day is is one where you know you can go and do research and development and waste gigawatts of electricity just trying to you know make a process better or trying to invent something new and if you fail it's it's not like a massive detrimental cost it's you know it's relatively it's so economic that we can desalinate ocean water right um heck i mean what if we have so much abundant electricity we can just you know deal we can actually um tweak the atmospheric composition of the planet to however we want it right and control weather right i think that comes in a world where we have a nuclear reactor on every corner kind of a thing right um and so i, I just i envision a different future i think than than and, and have different assumptions than those who would maybe criticize such a such a thing yeah and in a way i, I feel like your vision of the future is, is more of like a, a bullish future like you're more of like a, a definite optimist rather than maybe like a definite pessimist where you're like hey everybody stop consuming as much energy as you can like let's conserve this let's let's just not destroy the planet and you're like hey let's consume a lot of energy let's produce a lot of energy and let's make the world a better place 